More than just a car, but not a true truck, the Chevrolet El Camino was built tough enough to get the chores done on the farm, yet sporty enough to cruise boldly around downtown. This is the story of the Chevrolet El Camino. The exciting El Camino. Chevrolet's all-new El Camino. Look. Built in response to the Ford Ranchero, the original Chevy El Camino was introduced in 1959 and touted as the handiest helper a family ever had. When introduced in 1959, Chevy's new half-car, half-truck had a good first year of sales. Built on the 119-inch wheelbase two-door Chevy Brookwood station wagon, Chevy surprised Ford's 59 Ranchero with better overall sales of 22,246 to 14,169, respectively. Considering Ford's first Ranchero came out in 1957 and sold well at uh, 21,706 vehicles, it surprised everyone who followed this novel car slash truck market. Just a quick note that the Chevy El Camino ran from 1959 through 60 and then back in 1964 through 1987. Its cousins, the uh, GMC Sprint, ran from 1971 to 1977 and the uh, GMC Caballero ran from 1978 through 1987. Harley Earl, GM's director of design, was ahead of Ford. However, it took the Ranchero for Chevy to get off its ass and take action. And so the El Camino was introduced in 1959. 1964 saw the debut of a new Chevy El Camino that was based on the hot-selling Chevy Chevelle and also offered the option of a Super Sport, the SS. The 1964 El Camino models were equipped with several powertrains, such as the 194 cubic inch engine rated at 120 horsepower, a 230 cubic inch six-cylinder engine with a 155 horsepower rating, and a V8 283 cubic inch small block with a two-barrel carb rated at 195 horsepower. Transmission options included the Powerglide Muncie manuals, a three-speed manual, and a TH350 or 400 automatics. Go! Ranchera has 289 cubic inches. El Camino goes all the way up to 396 cubic inches, up to 135 more horses than Ranchero. New sheet metal highlighted the 1966 El Camino identical to the Chevelle. A new instrument panel with horizontal sweep speedometer was featured. Inside, the standard version featured a bench seat interior and rubber floor mats from the low-line Chevelle 300 series. The 1967 El Camino followed the Chevelle styling facelift with a new grill, front bumper, and trim. Air shocks remain standard equipment on the El Camino, allowing the driver to compensate for a load. The 1967 model year also brought the collapsible steering column and options of disc brakes and the turbo hydromatic 400 three-speed automatic transmission. In 1968, however, the El Camino received a complete body makeover and was equipped with a more powerful SS engine. These features allowed it to contend with the iconic lineup of American muscle cars throughout the 1960s and 1970s. The 1969 model showed only minor changes led by more rounded front-end styling. A single chrome bar connected quad headlights and a slotted bumper held the parking lights. New round instrument pods replaced the former linear layout. For the first time, the Chevrolet 350 V8 was used in an El Camino. For 1970, Chevy introduced the LS6 454 featuring a Chevelle front clip and Monte Carlo front parking lights. It was available in either a 360 horsepower or 450 horsepower performance level. The highest performing El Camino to date. The 1970 models received sheet metal revisions that gave the bodies a more squared up stance and interiors were also redesigned. The new SS396, which actually displaced a 402 cubic inch, although emblems read 396, was available. The LS6 454 engine rated at 450 horsepower and 500 foot-pound of torque gave the El Camino a quarter mile time in the upper 13 second range at around 106 miles per hour. 
By 1971, federal and insurance regulations took the fun out of the game and began restricting the performance of muscle cars, lowering horsepower, compression, and the El Camino's overall souped-up identity. In 1973, the El Camino's body style, still based on the Chevelle wagon chassis, was reimagined, creating the largest El Camino to date. The once lightweight, souped-up speedster morphed into an overweight, sluggish underperformer, available as the 350 or 454 cubic inch V8. El Camino by Chevrolet. Exciting, good-looking, and elegant. From the distinctive hood ornament, to the massive European-styled grill that emphasizes El Camino's wide stand. In 1974, Chevy introduced a new grill and the El Camino Classic trim level as seen on the 1974 Malibu Classic. Engine offerings included the base 350, a 400, and the preferred top 454. A new grill and another dip in performance marked the 1975 model featuring a 105 horsepower, 250 cubic inch inline six base engine. Even though the V8s were still around, the top performing 454 was only capable of roughly 250 horsepower. The 1976 El Camino Classic sported vertical stacked headlights but the same base model style. The 454 was no longer available as well as the manual transmission option on all V8s. In addition to the i6, the 350s and 400 cubic inch V8, Chevy added a 140 horsepower 305 cubic inch V8. I'm Tom T. Hua for Chevy El Camino. It's two special vehicles in one. Inside, it's all cars. You can even order swivel bucket seats. The colonnade body style of the 1977 featured vertical headlights on all El Caminos. The 400 was dropped in preparation for the arrival of the downsized 1978 models. Once again, sharing the body style of the Malibu, the 1978 Elki remained virtually the same until production ended in 1987. The El Camino SS disappeared, replaced at first by a Black Knight Edition and later the Royal Knight Edition. El Camino for 82. Big on standard value. As hardworking as it is good looking. For those who want a lot of car in their truck, and a lot of truck in their car. In 1982, El Camino was made over one last time with a new grill and quad headlamps. Although engine options changed, nothing especially innovative was introduced for A-body trucks. Through the joint efforts of Chevy and Chattanooga, Tennessee's Choo Choo Customs, the SS returned for a flash in 1984. Similar to the Monte Carlo SS and sporting identical 190 horsepower 305 cubic V8 engines, production eventually moved to Mexico. In 1987, Chevy officially pulled the El Camino from its production line. And although rumors swirled that Chevy planned to unveil a 2016 El Camino, cheaper pickup imports apparently derailed those plans. It seems the flooding of compact trucks like the Ford Ranger and Chevy S10 into the automotive market had satisfied the need for a direct replacement of the El Camino. Cheaper to manufacture and purchase than a car-truck crossover, the new compact trucks might have effectively replaced the El Caminos in practicality, but not in image. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for this video on the Chevy El Camino. We want to thank you all for watching. And uh, hey, a shout out to our neighbor, Alan, who owned, uh, I believe, two El Caminos in his lifetime and enjoyed them both, he says. And uh, hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. Leave us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell for future notifications. Thanks for watching the Boca Brothers YouTube channel.